I've been doing city camp since 1995, and it always bugged me as a salesman. People would call up, Chief Frank, I got this new whatever, and I can't get it bounced. Well, that's because you didn't read the book and you didn't look at the video. But who in this room does look at the book or read the video? Either way, right? You can either read the video and look at the book, or you can look at the book and read the video. Whatever. Doesn't make any difference. You're not going to do it. All right. So we're not going to do it. And so I sat and pondered this, how do we get around this? So my engineer and I, uh, we, were, we were the concept team, and we said, there's got to be a way around it. And we did, and it's called a smoothie. And the nice thing about it is smoothie, it's ready, set, go. You take it out of the box, you put your camera in, put on the top of that, and you start doing this. And I go, but Frank, wait a minute. My pictures are all over the place. I remind you, the first time you picked up a still camera, the first time you picked up a video camera, where were your pictures? They were all over the place. You made very bad pictures. You took pictures of the floor. You took pictures of the ceiling. All of that good stuff. You ran around the house, tried to catch the dog, never did. But you took pictures of the nice baseboard, all right? I think you're going to find here today that with the smoothie, you're going to start taking pictures. And within a few minutes, you're going to be having some usable material. So for those of you who have your iPhones, if you have an iPhone 4, I think that's what we have the mounts for. Uh, we encourage you to use your own phone, take your own material, and then when you take it home, you're going to amaze yourself with, wow, I did that all by myself with a couple of minutes of instruction. So uh, that being said, as he said, Garrett Brown invented the Steadicam. Um, and we just took his invention and kind of tweaked it a little bit and, and came up with the smoothie, which uh, allows people that really don't know anything about moving video to really start doing it. And today's price of, that B&H is offering on the one day special, which is a phenomenal deal. Uh, everybody in this room ought to go home with one of them because it really is, is a phenomenal deal. Um, and what we did was we made the concept so you could take it out of the box. It works. Um, we tried to extend that a little bit. So each one of the adapters that you use. Each one of them has a quarter 20 hole in the bottom, a nice metal insert, so you can use it on a tripod. So you're not just stuck using it with the, with the smoothie. And quite frankly, I guess our adapters have gotten very popular because we sell, we sell as many adapters separately as we sell with the smoothies. So uh, I think everybody's gotten the idea and we really don't tell anybody about it, but uh, it's worked out very, very well. Um, but the smoothie is based on a concept where the base is always the same and the mount is camera specific. So right now we have mounts for the iPhone 3, the iPhone 4, 4S, it's the same mount. Uh, the iPod Touch, uh, which has is, is got a camera that's very similar to the iPhone 4. Uh, the Flip Minnow, which is a camera that's gone out of business, but if you can get your hands on one of them, uh, they're selling in the $45 to $60 range. Um, I think B&H may still have a few. 1080, 1080 high def, heck of a deal. Uh, and um, if you buy a smoothie today, we'll give you a flip minnow mount for free to go with it. Uh, these are all the different mounts. Um, they're available. And so when you buy your smoothie today, uh, the iPhone 5 will be out in the fall. As soon as we can get our hands on an iPhone 5, we will, we will have the mount available. And so those of you that just have to upgrade to the iPhone 4, 5, uh, you can wait a couple of weeks while we get you the mount, but uh, we will have those available. We're also dealing with companies like Contour. Uh, we have a very good relationship with GoPro. Uh, we have the mount for GoPro right now. GoPro themselves use uh, uh, 14 of our smoothies, uh, one of the pilots and one of the Merlins for doing a lot of their videos that you see on their website or if you're on their, their list, they send out every week. So um, it really has turned out to be a very, very phenomenal device. So let's get into to how we operate it. Um, I've got Michael with me today. Uh, Michael started out um, building the Merlin uh, many, many years ago. When we first came out with the Merlin, we built the first ones in uh, Glendale. And Michael was on that manufacturing team, so he's, he knows uh, handheld. And that said, uh, for those of you here today, uh, if, you, if, if the, the smoothie is too lightweight for you to use, 
we are showing the, the Merlin here, and uh, it is here, and we're here to answer questions on that, even though the emphasis today is on smoothie. We're here to answer any questions you might have on the Merlin. And this is the Merlin II, uh, really quite popular with the whole HDSLR crowd, and uh, we're all here to, to show it to you. Uh, also, on Mark, you can see he's got a, a unit hanging off of his belt. Um, it is designed so that it can hang on the belt like he's got it and just carry it around with you. And then when you want to review videos, um, you can um, use this like so to stand up and do your videos so it sits on there. So we put a few little gitchies on there for you to, to use. So with that, I'm going to have um, a uh, video, a quick video. Uh, Jillian uh, had about a two minutes, two minutes worth of instruction, and we did that on purpose so that she could do this video. Um, Michael is the person shooting her, and remember that she's starting with two minutes worth of, of uh, instruction. So she's going to start with the unit in two pieces, and she puts it together and does her video. So I urge you to take a look at that now. Uh, time in, in the in usage. Uh, so with that, the guy that was doing all that uh, shooting of her is Michael, and I'm gonna have Michael come up, and uh, he'll he'll take you through the unit and how to use it and some little tricks that we start with. Okay, Michael. So um, first things first, kind of what is this and how do you use it? Um, like Frank was saying, we wanted to design a unit that you could take out of the box and start shooting videos with. So. What we have here is our base unit, base smoothie. So every smoothie looks like this. And then we have our little mount on the GoPro. It's a little small. You see on the iPod Touch ones over there, they're a little bit larger. So what, what you're going to do is take this out of the box. You literally put it in the base smoothie, fold down the handle, and you're ready to go. Out of the box, or at the factory, we actually balance it for you. So we do all the trim controls and everything like that. So you take it out, and it's already balanced. You can start shooting. So we have these red knobs on the side here. What do those do? This side to side knob, if I turn this, will dutch the whole unit. So I can get you know, unique shots, music video shots. Bring it back. And we're back to sitting level. The one on the back, I can trim this, which is basically turning this forward and now I'm tilting back. Say I'm following someone upstairs. So I can easily have this angled, walking back and forth, so you're not forcing the unit or anything like that. So this is all done on counterbalance. So we have weight in the camera up here, and then we have weight right here, and then some weight right here. So what we're doing is isolating the whole unit 
and we get this nice slow drop time, okay? The base, the center of the unit is what we call the gimbal. This is the gimbal handle. So it's a three axis gimbal. We can do panning, tilting, and then the roll, which is also horizon. So utilizing all three of those, you can pretty much do any type of shot that you want. You can get jib-like shots that arc, and then you can do mind-bending moves like that, which you would never want to do to your audience. <laughs> um, what's really nice about the smoothie is it's really lightweight. So you can get practice um, with the operating hand, which we'll go over once you get your hands on a unit, which you'll notice a lot of people want to use one hand when they first hold on to this. That's great. You can get stable shots, but you're not going to be able to point the lens anywhere. See if I move around, it's going to float around a little bit and everything like that. It's like you're in a boat. If I take my second hand and put this on this ring right here, now I can pan, I can tilt, I can do a fast movement and stop it, and come up over the crowd. So you want to film someone that's in a big crowd down the middle, I can stick this up and over, I can bring this back down, I can shoot up. And then, if you notice, this wrist, my wrist right here that's basically holding up the weight of the unit, never really moves. I move around it, the smoothie moves around it. So say I want to shoot back here, and now I can pan and bring that back. That just stays right here. So everything's moving centered around this gimbal, which basically isolates the entire unit. I can hit my hand, you're not going to get anything like that. You can run, you're not going to get any movement. It's all right here. So keep that in mind when you first get your hands on one of these. If you're holding the weight up with this hand around this ring, you're not going to get stable shots. It's going to look just like if you're holding onto the camera. So you want to isolate the handle from this ring, and they move separately. Any questions right off? What, I was curious, what, what, is the, uh, what is the physics of the, it looks like you've got two pods, right? The, the basic, that, that pod, and then is uh, an adapter that fits a number of different shooting apparatus, right? Up here. Yeah, yes. So I'm trying to understand. You said that that is balanced at the factory for that camera. So as you yeah. move into like the iPhone or the iPad, etc., other things, what is the relationship between that adapter and the balance of the thing you have in your hand? Great question, actually. Um, what we do is what Frank has. That's an iPod Touch mount, and we oh, weight that. Weight it. Each one. Each one has a weight. Each one has a separate height. Distance for an so, so to this unit, the bottom is always the same. So what we put on the top is camera specific. So depending on the, on, in this particular case, it's a very, very small adapter. In the case of the iPhone 4, uh, we've got a weight inside. And if you look at the mount, you'll see that it's up a certain height and, and it's already centered. So the the individual adapters is what does the, the, the preset. So, so, so but actually, when we set them in the factory, we use a big old block of metal. <laughs> That's just weighted. It's yeah. weighted, you know. Um, one thing that I didn't cover, actually, I just thought of, is the drop time, changing the drop time, sliding this weight up and down. This one is stationary. It cannot move. But I can adjust this weight. Someone asked me earlier if they uh, had another type of recorder they could put on the back here. It's going to weigh a little bit more. You can do that. Um, you just need to slide the weight down so you're counterbalancing a little bit more weight down at the bottom. And then also you can slide this weight up. And then you can get a little bit more fine-tuned operating, which is going to what we call slow down the drop time. So I can be really precise with my movements, which takes a little bit more skill and practice, but you might get a little better results. Out of the factory, we put a little dimple in this uh, metal right here, so you can always line up the weight back to the factory spec, which is about a one second drop time, which is uh, pretty good for a unit like this. And um, you know, when you get your hands on one experiment with it, if you slide the weight up and down, what's it do? Does it, you know, is it going to operate a little bit differently, and everything like that? Yes. I've done the regular consumer camera, the new one, small one, same thing. Yeah. yeah, actually right now, the, like what we were saying, the, the mounts that come with this are not a universal mount. So um, 
that has this shoe right here that this slides into. If you're looking to mount the camera with a quarter 20 or a tripod mount, you would have to go with the Merlin, which is more of a universal, anything from a half pound up to five pounds. But you handle it the same way? Yes, I'm sorry, yes, correct. Yes, you same exact. Um, on this one, your adjustments are a little bit different, although you can see the weights are almost in the same exact place. You have a weight out front here, and then a weight at the uh, bottom. But with this one, you can add more, take away more. You can also change the arc size in relation to the, the camera stage. So you have a lot more adjustments with the Merlin to be able to fit a lot more cameras. So, so the question was, um, if you own the Merlin, um, can you use, say, a GoPro that's a lighter weight camera? Um, the answer is yes. Um, it can go down to a half a pound camera. Now, I like to add a little bit of weight to the Merlin, though. We sell one pound disc weights that you can attach onto the bottom of, say, a GoPro. And it just adds a little bit more mass. It's a little bit more free moving, where this is more designed for a lighter weight rig, where that likes a heavier rig and operates a little bit better with a little more mass. But you wouldn't want to put a, D a DSLR on there. Uh, you couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't put a DSLR on here, because there's no quarter 20 mount to mount it. So, so the question is, um, when I'm operating, um, do I have any other uh, methods of holding onto this unit, whether I can add grips or anything like that? Right now, we don't have any you know, rubber grips that can, that can coat this around here. Um, you're adding so little pressure onto this right here. Really, all you're doing is dampening the movement that you're doing. So as I start and stop, I'm just adding a little pressure to the back, a little pressure to the front. Um, this grip right here does have rubber right here that you can hold on to. This is what I, I call the dummy hand. This is just holds the weight. It doesn't really do anything. Now as you get a little bit better, you can do one hand operation. Say if I want to start way up high and come down, you can get away with that. But normal day to day stuff, if I'm walking around, I have two hands on the rig. This is isolating the unit and this is controlling pan and then tilt. Yes? The handles are not molded on the side, so they're left or right hand? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, whatever your dominant hand is, you can, you can switch. Don't watch me operate with like this though. So, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Do you have brackets for this for a uh, point and shoot? Um, this one, no, we do not have brackets uh, for this camera for a point and shoot camera. Right now we have brackets for the GoPro, the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3, the iPhone 4S, which is the same as the iPhone 4, the iPod Touch, and the Flip Minnow. Are there plans to do that? Or is that um, not that I know of in the near future, no. no. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just, um, again, at the beginning of the presentation, what we said, we wanted the stabilizer that you could take out of the box and use in a heartbeat. Um, and to do that, you had to make a mount that is weighted properly for that unit. And if we put a more universal system on here, um, you're going to have the moving weights up and down and everything like that. So, yeah. I'm sorry. The, yeah. the GoPro makes different backs, uh, extra battery, uh, monitor back, does it accommodate those other backs? Sure. Well, out, of, out of the box, the question was, you know, does, does the smoothie accommodate all the GoPro accessories? Um, out of the box for the smoothie, we recommend the LCD back with the waterproof back housing. That's to design for the weight that I was saying for the dimple that's inside the metal right here. That's not to say that you can't adjust this up and down a little bit, depending on what accessories you put on the back here. Now, obviously, um, I would have to see the accessories and see the weight and everything like that. You probably couldn't you know, put a lot, you know, a mic or anything on here. It might start to tip over. It's not really designed to do that. Um, you might want to look more up into the Merlin if you're going to be adding a lot of accessories. But the accessories that come from GoPro themselves will be Yeah, again, I would, I would have to see the weight. You know, I, I would have to see, you know, exactly if it's gonna if it's gonna work or not I think a, a better answer to your question is what what is the camera device that the unit is designed for we design it for a specific for a specific model of the device so for instance with the iPhone 4 it's designed like this comes out of the box there's a thousand different mounts or holders for iPhones that we could never accommodate that. So we go back to the very basic, whatever the phone was. So the same thing with the GoPro. We, we say that it comes in the mount with the, with the video back 
and that's what we design it for. Now, and that's not to say it wouldn't work with some of these others, but it, as he said, it would take some tweaking and so forth. Uh, remember, the concept for the smoothie is take it out of the box, have it work. Um, as you get more involved in Steadicam and you want to do more things, more than likely uh, you'll, you'll want to move up to the Merlin. I think the unanswered question that's not being asked here is, what's the next model up and what does it cost? Well, there is no next model up uh, at the moment. And uh, if we went with the universal mount, we'd have to have a whole different set of instructions on how would this universal mount would work and what would the weight of the camera be. Because when you're doing, um, without getting into in too deep about, about operation, um, we have very few controls on here that allows us to, to move things. Whereas on the, the Merlin, we have controls to move the gimbal assembly up and down and move fore and aft and move side to side and add more weights to go from the, the half a pound up to five pounds. Uh, with this one, we don't have that latitude because uh, we're doing it for specific units. So if we went with a universal mount, We'd have to have a universal mount that allowed you to move your camera up and down, fore and aft, and side to side. And that's quite a trick, quite frankly. It's a little, little bit of an engineering trick. It's not something we've ruled aside, but it's not something that we see in the near future. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, we thank everyone for coming. And if you have any questions, there's a lot of uh, people here from Tiffin. And we're here for uh, quite a few more hours, and we're more than happy to help you. So thanks again. We appreciate you being here. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.